what advantages does each of the following evolutionary advantages give a plant? Vascular tissue, seeds, seeds enclosed in fruit, flowers, stoma, and gauze belts. So the vascular system or the vascular tissue is the is composed of the exome and the phloem. So whenever, so if you look down at the roots of a plant, the water would soak through and go to the roots, and then the roots uh, would deliver it to the exlum, uh, or the, the xylem, I should say, the xylem. And the xylem would take the water up through the plant and deliver it to all the cells to uh, give, the, give water to the plant. And, the same, and then the, the plants use that water to photosynthesize with the sun, to make uh, glucose, which is as their food, and uses the phloem to transport it to the rest of the cells of the plant so that it can feed itself. What are the three main types of tissue in plants and their function? Dermal. The dermal tissue system protects the soft tissues of plant and controls interactions with the plant's surroundings. Ground parenchyma. Parenchyma forms the filter tissue in the soft parts of the plant and is usually found in the root system. Vascular. Vascular system in plants transports the nutrients throughout the plant. Explain the process of transformation and how it plays a role in water transport in plants. Transformation is the process by which moisture is carried through the plant from roots to small pores on the underside of leaves, where it changes to vapor and is released to the atmosphere. Flowers is one of the reproductive parts of the plant because it attracts uh, insects such as bees and uh, butterflies to come to their plant to get their pollen uh, and so on and so forth so that it could take it to other plants to pollinate them and so that everything can grow. So the petals uh, are like the main attraction. It's the one that brings it in, brings the insect in. What are the order of the reproductive parts from outer to inner? So the order of the reproductive parts is the spetal, which uh, are like the uh, little, uh, th these things, I don't know, words. And then the petal, which is the purple part of this. The stamen, um, which is this, is this part right there that I'm pointing to, and then the carpel, which is like this little mini flower on the inside. Identify and provide the functions of the female and male reproductive organs of a flower. So the antler, which is this part, the little like, the little one, that makes pollen uh, so that when a insect such as a bee or butterfly lands to collect the nectar, uh, it gets on their fur and transport it to another plant. And from there, it would go into the smaller flower part, uh, which is called um, the stigma. Uh, it is a, it's gathered by the stigma and goes down the little tube, which is called the style, which goes to the ovary, which is inside uh, of this thing right there. Uh, it goes to the ovary, which uh, holds, holds oval, uh, which fertilizes the seed to continue the pollination for seeded plants. Describe the characteristics of angiosperms and explain why they are the most successful land plants. So this is an angiosperm because the, uh, the female and male reproductive organs on the inside are small and easy to get to by the pollinators, uh, which is why they are the most, like, populated, spread, most successful land plant, because they can reproduce easily. Explain three differences between monocots and dicots. This is a dicot. You can tell because the uh, flower has five petals on it, the leaves are broad, and the veins on the inside of the leaf are nut shaped. This is a monocot. You can tell because the petals are in groups of three, multiples of three. The leaves are narrow and they have uh, straight veins. What is required for seed germination? The requirements for seed germination is water, oxygen, and the proper temperature for that certain seed.
Describe the characteristics of a gymnosperm. This is a gymnosperm. You can tell because these seeds do not have an outer shell around them or hard covering. Uh, they do not produce flowers nor fruits and they are pollinated by the wind. This means that when they are ready to be pollinated and to spread, that they'll break off and the wind will take them where the wind takes them. Hormones enable plants to respond to the environment in many ways. A response to the environment is called a tropism. Describe the following types of tropisms and the hormone that is involved. Phototropism. Phototropism is when a plant faces the sun due to the hormone auxin so that it can receive the maximum amount of sunlight. Gravitropism is a response to the plant to the environment as it grows up away from gravity. This is, the, this is due to the hormone estrogen and cytokines. Here's an example. Stigmatropism is when a plant reacts to stimuli due to the hormone auxin, like when the yellow jacket touches the probe from the Venus flytrap. Auxin tells the plant to close the trap to catch the yellow jacket. Explain the responses controlled by the hormones auxin and gibberellic acid. The hormones auxin and gibberellic acid control the reactions to stimuli of the plant. List the levels of organization for a plant species from smallest to largest. The level of organization for a plant species starts with the cell, goes to the tissue, then the organelles, then the organs, and then the organ system, all the way to the organism. Define cell specialization. Provide four examples of plant and animal cells that are specialized and explain how form fits function for each. Cell specialization is when a cell has a certain task within the organism. For the plant, there is the centrifugal, which protects the plant cell, the epidermal, which is a boundary to keep water in, the guard cell, which opens and closes its stomata, and the trichome, which reflects sunlight and can secrete toxins to keep away predators. And now for the animals, we have white blood cells to fight off infections, red blood cells to carry oxygen to cells, neuron cells to transport information and send it back to the brain and vice versa, and platelets to form blood clots to stop bleeding.